Hi everyone, here's a short version of painting grapes and fruit. I quickly establish my drawing with a mixture of indigo and a little alizarin crimson. Get everything on the background nice and dark, the lip of the tabletop, and then I put some very pastel color into the flowers. I'm going to put some reflected light into this vase. That's a little piece of tangerine that I've added gives me an opportunity to bring in a lot of bright orange. This is going to be the wildest color on the painting. And I'm going to indicate where I want my light to hit the tabletop. Just a few strokes. Let's get into the grapes. There's this beautiful blush on the top of the grapes. Gives it such form. I work all over the canvas at the same time and then I'm going to add some reflected color. Take your time with this. Let's close in. You can see in a close-up that the grapes are starting to become very three-dimensional. And now I'm working on that piece of tangerine. Because it's such a beautiful color, it's going to be very important to the painting. I think I need something in the background to pull this together, so I'm putting a big solid tangerine. And now back into those buds. This one's partially open, giving me a chance to add some highlights. Truth is, I don't like that tangerine, so the best thing to do when you don't like something is take it out. I've created a much smaller piece of tangerine in the background. And now I'm just going to add some branches, some leaves, a little bit of interest behind everything, working on both sides of the vase. And then I'll highlight the table right around the subject matter. This will bring my eye right into that tangerine and the vase. A little extra color in the lip brightens the painting. And now I'm going to go into the vase. This is a sterling silver vase. The thing to remember about sterling silver is you need a great deal of contrast between the light and the dark. This is indigo and a little bit of sap green. So it's very dark. And I'm just deciding where I want the reflection from the tabletop and the fruit to appear. Ooh, that's pretty. A little reflected rose color from the petals. And we'll start working on our highlights. When you're painting glass or silver or brass, highlights are what make the object come alive. I'm working wet and wet, so I have to be very careful not to get muddy. Now let's go back and just start putting some details the finer details into the grapes. Little stems, they hold the grapes together, otherwise they would be falling off the table. And then back into the far side of the grape with some translucent light. Look at how those foreground grapes are being forced forward. Let's get back into that vase, working stroke by stroke, just adding lights. Some more reflected light from that tangerine. Get some color up into that vase. It also attaches the piece of fruit to the composition. Secondary highlights. You sort of sneak up on your highlights. And now we're ready to go. Whew. Okay. You want these very, very bright highlights to have good form. 
they need a shape take your time because I'm working wet and wet I can get rid of some edges I just keep moving it around until I have exactly what I want nice smooth out some more edges oh that's that's just what I want now I'm going to reestablish just the very brightest highlights. A few more lights off of that tangerine. Here's where we started today. And this is what we've accomplished in this session. Let's get into our flowers. I leave my flowers to the very end, otherwise they aren't the subject, they get lost. I think I'm finished with them and then I discover when I start putting more detail in that the flowers just aren't exciting enough. So now I'm going back into them and starting to form the flower. I never think about individual petals. I only think in terms of light and dark. Working wet and wet, all the edges can be soft. This is a great way to create the softness of a flower. You can see you lose your highlights and you bring them back. Being careful that your brush strokes remain fluid and interesting. I've emphasized the center there and now I'm going to put a little bit of a pink glow on these buds. Look how soft that is. All right, now I've really come near the end of the painting and I'm putting my final highlights onto the flowers. I'm just highlighting the tips as they turn toward the light. Look what a difference it makes. And now a few little touches, just looking for where I can improve the drawing, the light. Just little touches of light that bring the painting around to its final stage. Now this is just a blossom. I want to bring some of that pink down onto the tabletop. So I'm floating a couple of small petals. Look how that makes that little piece of tangerine go back. A few more highlights. Dash here, dash there. The final strokes. And here we are, the finished painting. I'm very happy with it. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you learned something.